Hello everybody and welcome to the first of what I'd like to be a weekly video on some Game Maker example highlights. These are some examples or open source files that I like and I think you'll like and hopefully find useful in either the project you're working on now or your future project. Or hey, maybe you might get an idea for a project based on some of these examples. So. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I want to show you three examples in this video. The first one is one that I just downloaded. I'm looking at right now and really inspired this video because I thought, oh my gosh, like people need to see this thing. Uh, you guys know that I'm working on that survival MMO because I'm posting weekly dev blogs. And uh, one, of the, one of the features that I want to have is a randomly generated world. So I'm kind of looking at some examples, some methods that other people have used to achieve that. And... I ran across this, and it's freaking sweet. I mean, look, he has a graph. I mean, who makes a graph when they do an open source file? Very few people. And when they do make these graphs, the example's normally phenomenal. And it is, you know, never fails. So, uh, yeah, basically, it's a randomly generated world. So here's one of the worlds that he generated with this example. So it, it basically has different biomes. So you can see there's like grass, there's rainforest, there's all the desert, you know, snow, all these different things. Uh, on on the uh, the game maker forum, he has a place where you can download the open source file or just an uh, executable file for you to play around with. I went ahead and downloaded it because I'm trying to learn, man. I'm always learning. So let's go ahead and run the file. So you guys can see what this is all about. I was pretty impressed by it. So you can set the world size. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at max 640. Now apparently it just generates pixel by pixel, but I think you can uh, set it to where each of those pixels can represent like a tile or an object. So you can have like a 32 by 32, you know, grass tile and desert tile instead of you know the pixels that it generates so look at look at this this is pretty neat right generation complete oh wow that's way different than the first map that I generated so this looks like mainly snow areas I think yeah okay so look look kind of like up here you know this thingy I don't uh, don't even know what the, it's called right now and I have a fly attacking my face but uh, you can see it kind of like shows the elevation, it shows the temperature, uh, I think that's what, humidity, humidity, and then it shows the name of the biome. So these are high mountains, okay, so it's not snow. Uh, some wood, wooded area, forest, swamp, whatever, the, yeah. So this is pretty cool, different biomes and everything. This fly is very bold, it's like getting in my face, totally ruining the video. So some water, that's kind of cool, let's do it again. And while that's loading, uh, on my Twitter, I posted one of the maps that I generated with it. it said working on random map generation. Because, uh, yeah, I want to use something like this for my game. Uh, so, like I said, that was way different than the first map that I that I generated. So let's do it again. Generating temperature. Variating elevation. Populating the world. Generation complete. Okay, yeah, so everyone is so different. I think that's so cool. You know, every map is completely different than, than the one before it. And I just think that's cool, and it's definitely probably something for you to check out, especially if you're interested in random map generation. So anyway, I don't know a lot about it, unfortunately, but I'm definitely, I mean, look at all this. There's some comments on there. That's always good. So I'm definitely going to check that out for my game. Okay, number two, this is something that I am using currently in my game. I learned from it, and I basically took his code. I made it mine. I basically revamped a lot of this guy's code and just made it way more functional for at least what I want to use it for. But it's called Sprite Real-Time Multicoloring Using Shaders. Very, very catchy name there. Basically, it will turn a sprite like this blue guy here into, way down here, this right here. So basically, it will allow you to take one sprite of a certain color, swap all the colors for another color. So you could basically, like this guy, he could be have different uh, shades of skin. And that's exactly what I used it for in my game. So back to my Twitter. Using that same example, I'm basically using one sprite to generate all these other sprites. Uh, so there's eight shades of skin. I only have one sprite file for all of these people. And uh, basically, you can see those little color palettes. It basically swaps 
one color palette for one of these skin tones. Um, so kind of maybe if I run the example I can explain it better because it is a little bit complicated and it does use shaders and really I want to re-upload this to my website with kind of the changes that I made to the code because I made it way better for example this code does not support animations that I know of but I made the new code that I made it supports animations uh, so basically here's the blue guy we can run run it just so you can see that it works go ahead and run it real quick and it's very cool because it's super handy you don't have to have a bunch of sprites for all these different colors for like the same object or the same uh, sprite or whatever so there you go basically in the in the shaders it's turning this sprite into this guy right here it's just, all, all it's doing is recoloring the sprite that's all it's doing swapping the palette so there's three sprites that you have to worry about the base character which is the blue guy the base color map which is basically every color that you use on that blue guy his, from his eyes to the skin color to everything is right there it basically detects these colors the code will basically detect these colors on the blue guy sprite <laughs> no I'm like really explaining this well right it detects these colors and replaces them with this sprite color map it replaces them all with this so you can see instead of blue it has this light shade of skin eye color everything is in there anyway uh, if you want to use this again it basically just changes the color of his skin but you can use it for like anything uh, that you want if you want to recolor the 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 graphic uh, uh, of your sprites if you want to use this please read everything he wrote on this forum post because it's all very important I spent about two days figuring all this out and uh, like I said I rewrote a lot of the code uh, and I'm able to basically do this now I'll have more in the dev blog about it but it's very cool very extremely handy it's one of those things that once you know how to do it you think how did I survive so long without this because for this I had three different skin tones and you know these guys are all anima an animated so up animations down animations left right I mean doing all the different things so to do that with each skin tone took like three times the animations and, and three times the sprites as what I'm using right now so very very cool and lastly, but not least, I'm not going to open this example or anything. I want to direct you to my website, wizardy.com. I have an example section on here. I only have one lonely example right now, but I'm about to fill this thing with examples that I've made. If you want to know how to make multiplayer online games like the survival MMO that I'm working on right now, go to my website, click examples, and I have something that I created a couple years ago called WizNet version 1.1. Uh, go here. I'm not going to open it right now, but I'm just going to, all the information's on here, the link's in the description. I have made a client in a server example of how to use uh, networking, basically. You know, a client, server, it's all on here. Um, I'm about to totally update this and, and redo it, but it's definitely something you can learn from right now. I think, I haven't opened this for a while, but I wanted you guys to know about it because a lot of you guys asked me how to do online stuff. I have an example on my freaking website. So you can go here. Yeah, there's a chat room. Uh, you can choose your username. There's player movement, uh, handles connecting to the server. All that's there. It's totally free. It's not on the marketplace. Go check out the example. It works well with Fatal Sheep's tutorial. If you Google Fatal Sheep networking tutorial, you'll find it. I'll put the link for that in the description too. This tutorial rides off of his tutorial. So definitely a good resource if you want to learn networking. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions, post it in the comments. Sorry there's not a lot of editing in this video. I have a laptop without Adobe uh, Premiere, so just have to do it all in one take. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have an awesome week, and I'll be with you in a couple days for a new dev blog. So see ya.